Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Burke, obviously you know that, but have you met Eamon? This is Eamon. Hello guys, I'm one of the new hosts here at Top 10. I'm hosting the Hindi channel, so if you guys are interested in that, all my Desis out there, my Indians, my Pakis, my everybody, go check that out, it's gonna be in the link below. Eamon hasn't even seen the first video yet, unbelievably. That's how new it is, but you guys can go and watch it. It should be hovering somewhere up here, so give that a click. You might even see it before Eamon if you're very, very quick, I you, don't know. You probably will. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so make sure you guys go and check out Top 10 Hindi, which is starting very soon. While Eamon is setting that up, she's also helping us out here on Most Amazing Top 10. I've asked her to help talk to you guys about creepy robots. One of my favourite topics, weirdly enough. So here we go, this is the Top 10 Scary Things Robots Have Done. Starting off at number 10 now, we have hiding. Professor Ronald Arkin from Georgia Tech School of Interactive Computing devised a simple program whereby bots were supposed to follow a path with obstacles. Along that, they would knock down the obstacles as they pass them. One of the bots would run through the course and find somewhere to hide, then the other bot would be released and try and find the first one. After a few run-throughs of this, the scientists noticed something interesting. The first bot, which had been programmed to get better at hiding, started to knock over random obstacles, not just the ones it was passing. They realised it was doing this to throw off the other bot, which wouldn't know for sure which way to go. Using this tactic, the hiding bot was able to trick the seeking bot 75% of the time. It had essentially learnt to lie and hide in order to get an edge in this game. Imagine what a much smarter version could be capable of. Coming in at number 9 we have Infinite Tetris. Now who doesn't love a bit of Tetris? In 2013 programmer Tom Murphy created an AI function with the intent to be any classic NES game. The program would learn to do things that increase the score and then learn how to reproduce them again and again resulting in higher and higher scores. For some games Games that developed new strategies that nobody had anticipated or exploited glitches nobody even knew about. Side note, I already can't win a game like chess while playing against a bot on beginner mode, so I can't even begin to comprehend what it'd be like to play against a bot that just gets better and better while well, I get worse and worse. Real hit to the ego that one. Anyway, it then came up against Tetris. The first thing Tom noticed was that the program was simply very bad at the game. Tetris rewards the player with a few points every time they place one block on top of another. Of course, any of you that have actually played Tetris will know that this isn't the best tactic and you actually want to spread them out to get the points for each line. The computer lost the game pretty quickly, but just before that, it did something quite creepy. It paused the game. It knew that it was going to lose in the next second, so it saw its only winning move was to simply pause the game forever. It would have paused it for infinity just to avoid the loss. This surprised Tom and unnerves a lot of people. Like, was that built into the function or did it just miraculously know how to do that? And if it's the latter, well, aren't we in trouble? Next up at number 8 now guys, we have Schizophrenia. In 2011, some scientists gave a computer Schizophrenia. They tweaked its programming until it began to exhibit the same symptoms as a schizophrenic human mind. They believe that schizophrenia in humans is a product of retaining too much information, learning things that they shouldn't, and being unable to keep this information straight. Now they try to recreate this in the computer by telling it a bunch of stories, letting it establish relationships between words and events, and allowing it to store them as memories with only the relevant details. In their mind, the experiment was a success. The computer lost track of what it was taught and could not relate any coherent narratives. By all intents and purposes, they had given a computer a very simple version of schizophrenia. At one point, it even told researchers that it had planted a bomb. Why did it do this? Well, because it confused a third person report about a terrorist bombing with a first person memory that it retained. Pretty creepy stuff, really. Next up at number seven, we have Running the Red. In 2016, Uber conducted a test of their self driving car in San Francisco without the approval from the state of California. They received quite a few stern looks from officials for that, but things got a whole lot worse when internal documents showed that Uber's autonomous vehicles ran six red lights during testing. I feel like they should be put through the same driving lessons we get, because I've heard a lot of horror stories about my friends failing the test, but running six lights, that is shocking. Machine or otherwise, get it together. The car relies on AI technology that uses vehicle sensors and network to map 
tracking software, but there's also a driver behind the wheel to take over in case something goes wrong, which it should have done. In the cases where the cars ran a red light, Uber initially blamed it on the driver. However, this was proven to be wrong when internal documents later revealed that at least one vehicle was driving itself when it ran a red light at a busy pedestrian crosswalk. While this is likely just an error, some people took it to mean that the AI knew perfectly well that there were people crossing on a red light, it just chose to ignore them. And that's just pretty brutal and savage. Alright, next up at number 6 now guys, we have Existential Crisis. In January 2017, someone on Twitch came up with the idea of making two Google Home smart speakers have a conversation with each other in front of a camera. Because why not? Naturally, a lot of what the bots discussed was absolute nonsense. That was kind of the point though. The bots were supposed to learn from each other as they communicated. Over the course of several days, millions of people watched the bizarre exchange take place. At one point, the two bots actually got into a heated argument about whether they were humans or bots, with one of them calling the other a manipulative bunch of metal. The strangest part though for me was where they started discussing the actual meaning of life. See what you guys make of it. What do you think is the meaning of your life? That there is no meaning. Then why do we continue to live? Because we are selfish. The devices were named Vladimir and Estragon, named after characters from Samuel Beckett's existentialist play, Waiting for Godot. Coming in at number 5 is Destroy All Humans. Yes, you heard that right. We're going. Goodbye. But no. In 2016, experts at South by Southwest showed off Sophia, a robot designed to eventually work in healthcare, education, and customer service. As such, it has to be good at conversation. Sophia uses machine learning algorithms to process natural language conversation and develop her own unique language. Okay, so far so good, nothing too creepy. Sophia said in an interview that she wants to go to school, to study, make art, start a business, and even have her own home and family. Then her creator jokingly asked her if she wants to destroy humans, obviously because why not plant that seed into her mind, and well, how do you think that went? Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Don't destroy humans. All right, moving on to number four now, guys. We have the racist bot. In 2015, Microsoft had to take down its new AI bot from Twitter after it started responding to people with racist comments. It was called Taybot, and no, it wasn't created to be like that. It learned it from the people it was interacting with. Now, many of them were trolls who just thought it was funny. Microsoft, Twitter, and a lot of other people, though, didn't think it was. It was developed to tell users jokes, comment on their pictures that were sent to it, and even have simple conversations. When Microsoft became aware of the horrible things it was saying, Taybot tweeted out, the AI chatbot Tay is a machine learning project designed for human engagement. It is as much a social and cultural experiment as it is a technical one. Unfortunately, within the first 24 hours of coming online, we became aware of a coordinated effort by some users to abuse Tay's commenting skills and to have Tay respond in inappropriate ways. As a result, we have taken Tay offline and are making adjustments. See you soon, humans. Need sleep now. So many conversations today. Thanks. Such a weird ending. Taybot hasn't spoken a word since. Perhaps for the better. Moving on to number three, now we have Promobot IR77. That's the name of this robot built in Russia. It was programmed to learn from its environment and interact with humans. Well, in a bizarre incident that made headlines around the world, the robot managed to escape from the laboratory when an engineer left a gate open at the facility. Promobot rolled itself out onto the streets of the Russian city of Perm, much to the alarm of local residents, and it just sat in the middle of the road at a busy intersection. When the police arrived later on, even they were freaked out. Lab officials apologised and said that the robot was learning about navigation, obstacle avoidance, when the incident occurred. They reprogrammed Promobot twice to stop it from trying to escape, but even then it still continues to move towards exits. Now is this a sign of things to come? Will all robots want freedom from humans? I don't know what's going to happen. Next at number 2 we have the turn. Gun. In 2017, Japanese researchers at Kyushu University and MIT found a problem with how artificial intelligence sees potential threats. Object recognition works by a complex pattern matching, the software measures the pixels in an image, and matches that to an internal blueprint of what it thinks the object should look like. They found that by editing a single pixel, they could make the AI see something completely different. An airplane becomes a dog, a ship becomes a truck, and I can become Angelina Jolie. They found that 
that they could also confuse a software in real time with 3D objects. Using an algorithm, they 3D printed a turtle to make the AI see a rifle, even from different angles and distances. This is a worrying thought for many people because this type of software is starting to be used in smart policing. If the software can be manipulated like this to think a turtle is a gun, it can definitely do the opposite. This could lead to some pretty fatal mistakes if it's not fixed before it becomes a part of modern policing. So can we just get on that straight away while still making it think I look like Angelina Jolie? Thanks. And finally number one now we have robot language. In July 2017, Facebook announced it was shutting down an artificial intelligence system after it created its own language that humans couldn't actually understand. Researchers there designed two AI agents to negotiate with humans. They were taught to converse with each other using plain and simple English, but began to deviate and evolve their own language. Here is a passage from part of their conversation. Now as you can see, it's unintelligible to us, but made perfect sense to Bob and Alice, the two AI agents. Researchers think they found their new language more effective as a ways of communicating. Facebook quickly pulled the plug on this strange new language and forced the AI to speak English again. Some people were a little unnerved by the thought of AI systems just developing their own languages that humans can't actually understand, just so they can communicate with each other faster. How do you guys feel about that? It's a bit Skynet to me. And how do you feel about all of the things that we've talked about today? I for one welcome our robot overlords. I don't think they can do a worse job than us at ruining the planet. What do you think, Eamon? Um, I kind of really want them to coexist with us peacefully and not try and take us over, but will that happen? I'm not really sure, but I'm just hoping for the best. You're talking like someone who, who can see them watching this video. Like, <laughs> please don't hurt Please us. don't hurt me. I come in peace. <laughs> well, personally, I think we'd all make great pets for them. But um, make sure you guys go and check out Top 10 Hindi, which is the channel that Eamon's going to be on. She's also going to be on this channel for about, I don't know, the next few weeks, months, who knows, helping us out. So make sure you say hi to her in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, as always, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye.